And then it said they were looking after the widows. Well, if you're looking after the widows, you got to be honest. Honest men full of, full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Oh, you mishandle the money or you mishandle the widows if you're not filled with the Holy Ghost. So they had to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And they chose seven men as beginning with Stephen, amen, and Philip. Seven men. So they were filled with the Holy Ghost and wisdom. And the Bible says Stephen, being full of the Holy Ghost and power, did great signs among the people. And now here's Philip down in Samaria preaching. And, and, and uh, he's preaching Christ, full of the Holy Ghost. And then the Bible goes on to say in Acts 8, I'm on in Acts 8, 5, 6 now. The Bible says the people with one accord gave heed to those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Here's one deacon, one deacon, one Holy Ghost, one deacon, one message. Busted up the devil's whole operation. That's why the devil hate the anointing. Because he spent years trying to keep you blinded. He spent years trying to keep you ignorant. He spent years trying to keep you bound up in religion and tradition. He spent years trying to keep the anointing out of the church. We just want a nice, sweet, quiet church. We don't want them tongues. We, we, we don't want them tongues. Tongues is of the devil. We don't want them tongues in church. We don't want no Holy Ghost. We don't want no shouting. We don't want no running around. Yep, but it, you're going to have people bound bound in sin and nicotine, alcohol and racial prejudice and hatred and unforgiveness and sickness and disease and poverty is the anointing that sets you free. Is the anointing that destroys the yoke. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said is the anointing amen. that destroys the yoke and sets the captive free. Amen. Amen. Now, so Philip is preaching Christ down in Samaria. The people with one accord gave heed to the things which Philip spake, seeing, hearing, and seeing the miracles. You know, uh, we always want to see a miracle, but right here it says hearing and seeing miracles. Did you know you could hear a miracle just as much as you could see one? Sure you could. For unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many that were lame and were taken with the palsy that were healed. Now here's the point I want to make, verse 8. And there was great joy in the city. Great joy in the city. Amen. Great joy. See, when you preach the gospel, it produces great joy. How come? People are free. People get healed. Nobody wants to be sick. Nobody wants to be in bondage. Nobody wants to be in a wheelchair. Nobody wants to be blind. Nobody wants to be deaf. Nobody wants to hurt. That's why we take medicine. That's why we go to the doctor. That's why when you're hurting, you say, pray for me. That's why they send uh, uh, clergy and stuff to the hospital to pray for people because nobody wants to be sick. Sickness is of the devil. Amen. Sickness has plagued the human race since the fall of Adam in the garden. Jesus went about doing good and healing all that was oppressed of the devil. Sickness in the Bible is called satanic oppression. Amen. Any form of it. I mean, there's nothing good about a headache. Amen. If you don't feel good, people will say, well, now, how are you feeling today? You say, well, I'm not feeling well. That means you're, you're sick. You're not feeling your best. Nobody wants to hurt. Nobody wants a headache. Nobody wants to be sick. Nobody wants their children sick. Nobody wants their children to die sick. Nobody wants their children to die premature. No parent wants to bury their children. No child wants to lose their parents at a young age when they need them the most. Jesus came to raise people from the dead. Jesus healed the sick. Jesus cast out devils. And he said, the works that I do shall you do also. We should be doing the same thing. Yes. Casting out devils and healing and sick. Now, so, good Bible preaching and teaching produces joy. You see that? There was great joy in the city. All through the Bible. Go through the Bible, the book of Acts, and when you see the word joy or rejoicing, underline it. It's right after people have heard some good news. Now, if you hear God's making you sick and God won't put them on you, then you can bear and God ain't did nothing wrong, you're not going to have a lot of joy about that. 
You got a lot of mad people in the church because somebody, some preacher, some preacher told them that God killed your mama. Some preacher said God put that cancer on your mama. Some preacher said God and did no wrong, baby. You know, the Lord give it, the Lord take it away. No, 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 no. The Lord give it and Satan take it away. Yeah. The Bible calls Satan a thief. He comes to steal, he comes to kill, and he comes to destroy. Jesus said, but I am come that you might have life and that you might have life more abundantly. Amen. 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 I said amen. amen. So good Bible preaching produces joy, rejoicing, and faith. Amen. Now, Jesus went around teaching and preaching. Jesus teaching and preaching produced faith. Amen. Go to John's gospel, chapter number four. The gospel of John, chapter number four. <clears throat> Jesus is teaching and preaching produce faith. That's the reason he taught and that's the reason he preached like he did. John's Gospel chapter 4. This is uh, the lady at the well. John's Gospel chapter number 4. When you get it, say amen. amen. All right. <clears throat> Uh, Jesus talking to this Samaritan lady at the well. And uh, uh, Jesus asked the lady for a drink. She said, the Samaritans have no dealing with the Jews. Thou knowest that. And, and uh, Jesus said, but woman, if you knew who it was that asked thee for a drink, then you would ask me for a drink. And I'd give you living water that you thirst no more. And she said, this well belongs to me and my family, and Jacob gave us my family this well. And, and then she said, the well is deep, and you don't have anything to draw with. And Jesus said, if you draw water from that well, you shall thirst again. See, he's ministering to the lady. But whosoever shall drink it of the water that I shall give shall never thirst. For the water that I shall give shall be in him a well of water that's springing up in the everlasting life. That's Zoe, eternal life, the well of salvation. Isaiah chapter 12, verse 3 says, we shall drink water from the wells of salvation. See, when you believe in God, receive Jesus as a well, then you call a well of salvation. And in that well is joy, love, peace, goodness, kindness, temperance, patience, so on and so forth. The nine fruit of the Spirit are in that, they're in that well. You can draw water out of that well. Amen. Amen. And so... Uh, uh, the lady said, give me this water whereby I never thirst again. Jesus said, go get your husband. She said, I don't have one. He said, well, thou hast well said you've had five husbands and the one you're living with now is not your husband. You know, just because you're living with somebody, that doesn't mean that's your spouse or your wife or your husband. Amen. I always like to comment on this lady. Whatever, she, she must have been good looking. She, she must have been a knockout. She went through five, five. I've had five husbands. Somebody was willing to take a chance on her. Yeah. Amen. I mean, just a divorce doesn't mean you're ugly. A divorce doesn't mean you're not wanted. Somebody out there wants you. Five men wanted her. And she obviously gave up. He might would have married her, but she probably said, no, that's all right, just come on in. The one you're living with now is not your husband. And, and uh, the mom said she dropped her. She, she thought she changed her mentality. Now she's calling Jesus sir. She called him sir. Amen. And uh, verse, uh, verse 25. And the woman said unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. For when he hath come, he will tell us all things. And Jesus said unto her, I that speaketh to thee am he. And upon this and upon this came his disciples, and they came back and tried to compel him to eat. Verse 28 says, But the woman then left her water pot and went away into the city and said unto men. Well, now she, she got influence here. She said unto men, Come see a man which told me all that I ever did. Is not this the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one? Then they went out of the city and came unto him. And in the meanwhile, his disciples prayed or urged him, saying, Master, eat. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that you know not of. Therefore the disciples said one to another, Have any man brought him all to eat? And Jesus said, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish the work. So on and so forth. Now skip all the way down to the 39th verse. And many of the Samaritans. How many? 
many, many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him. Now, how come they believed on him? They believed on him for the saying of the woman. Her words about Jesus produced faith in them about Jesus. They believed on Jesus because of her sayings, the sayings of the woman. She went and told them about a man. And that's how Jesus got famous by it being noised abroad. That's what happened to the lady with the issue of blood when she had heard of Jesus. Somebody evidently came to her because she's quarantined. She can't come out because she's got a hemorrhage. But they kept telling her, and they kept telling her, and she kept, faith came. She believed. She said, if I can, I will. And if he's coming, somebody told blind Bartimaeus about him. He said, I can't see, but I can hear the roar of the crowd. And the Bible said he heard the roar of the crowd. Oh, who, who, who's that? Who, who's that? Somebody, who, 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 what's, who, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? He heard the roar of the crowd. And somebody said, Jesus of Nazareth passed by. And he said, this is my chance. Jesus, 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 thou son of David, have mercy upon me. And the Bible said, they said, shut up, Barnabas. Shut that crying up. And the Bible said, he cried yet the more. See, you got to be desperate. <laughs> you, you, you're not going to just, you could get healed at home. Thank God for media and streams. And the flow of the anointing coming home. But sometimes, if you're in proximity and can get to a meeting, you need to get to where the anointing is. Effort, the anointing accommodates effort. The lady with the issue of blood couldn't get out. She wasn't supposed to get out, but she broke quarantine. She broke rules and said, I'm getting out. Bartimaeus said, don't tell me to shut up. I'm listening for the roar of the crowd. When he passed by, I'm going to cry out, Jesus, Jesus, shut up, Bartimaeus. I'm not going to shut up. This is my chance. Yeah. Amen. Bible said he cried yet to one. Jesus stopped and turned. He recognized the cry yes. above the regular roar yes. of the crowd. And he says, go bring that man hither to me. Yes. And they came to bottom edge and said, the master call it for thee. And he pulled off that jacket because he knew this is my chance. This is my chance. The jacket was a legal license to beg. He threw off his beggar's garment implying I'm about to receive I'm about to be delivered from being blind. I'm not going to be blind anymore. This is my chance. The master has called for me. And he came to Jesus and said, what do you need, blind son of Timaeus? He said, my eyes, Lord, that I might see. He says, according to your faith, Bartimaeus, so be it unto thee. And the Bible says, eyes was open, and he began to rejoice. Can I tell you what the Bible says he did after that? We're going to cover all of these cases. See, I got till, uh, till uh, the rapture to finish this. Amen. So ain't no use in me nor you getting in a hurry. You don't know these things, so I'm telling you about these things over and over again. I'm going fast, but I'm telling you about these things. And the Bible says, Bartimaeus got in the crowd and started following Jesus from that day. Yes. He ain't blind no more. He don't need a, garment, a beggar's garment anymore. After you get healed, you can get a job. Amen. Amen. Say amen. amen. I said after you healed, you don't need the cup on the corner. Amen. After you get healed, you might not need the welfare or the check. I know people who get paid for their condition. And there's some people that have been in the healing line before said, no, not that I get paid for that. They don't want to be healed for that. Just something else because that's what, no, if I get healed, I get, pay, I get my check. They'll cut my check off. Oh, are you kidding? God wants to give you a whole business. Hallelujah. More than that condition paying you. Amen. 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 But the point I'm making is you got to get out of your comfort zone. Yes. Four men had a friend. They toted him where I come from. Some people carry, they, we tote. In Louisiana, where I come from, we tote. And we told and reach, reach that here. And they told it him, perhaps for days. And they couldn't get him in because of the crowd. And they said, we didn't come too far uh, to be locked out. 
Bartimaeus could, I mean, the, 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 the man on the pallet could have said, well, that's okay. Must not have been the will of God for me to get it today. No, no, no. They said, no, uh-uh, no, uh-uh, uh-uh. We're going to get you in there if we had to climb up on top of the house. And they did. Amen. See, that's faith. Amen. And he said, whoa, whoa, now, wait, now, be careful. No, 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 we don't carry you this far. Uh, we're going to get you in. We got to tear up the roof. And they did. And the Bible said they lowered him. They put a, a ropes around him. I got a picture of it on the front of I got a series out there on the table called, <clears throat> called Healing and Righteousness. And, the, and there's a picture of an open roof and four men lowering a man on a pallet right before Jesus. Amen. And Jesus seeing their faith. Don't you think that interrupted the meeting? Somebody's up there making noise while you're preaching and Oh, there's a, and then dust flying and boys and the whole meeting then stopped and they lowered the man right before Jesus. He could have called the police for obstruction of public prop, uh, private property. But no, he's a carpenter. Can I tell you something about that meeting? It was at his house. Amen. It was at his house. Amen. So nothing was said. He's a carpenter. He can fix that with words or with tools. And the Lord the man through the roof before Jesus and everybody, the scribes and the Pharisees and the Sadducees <laughs> and all these other seas, they was coming to see and not to, not to receive. Yes. And the Bible said the power was present to heal them. Yes. But them didn't get healed. Yeah. They're just watching. Yes. Sad to see. See, the Pharisees believe in life after death and spirit. The Sadducees didn't believe in the resurrection. They didn't believe in you had a spirit. They didn't believe in life after death. They didn't believe in nothing. That's why they were sad, you see. Amen. <laughs> I get that from Charles Capps. <laughs> well, they lowered the man right before Jesus. And the mom said, him looking up, seeing their faith. Now, he didn't wait till they, they got the man in. The mom said, he looked up and said, cheer up. Be of good cheer, your sins be forgiven thee. He knew the man's condition was based upon sinful condemnation. So you can be so condemned over a sin in your life, condemnation gives the devil the right to ride your back. Sickness and disease thrive on guilt, fear, and condemnation. The first thing Jesus told the man, your sins be forgiven. And the Pharisees and Sadducees got mad. And he said, which is easier to say, thy sins be forgiven thee, arise, take up thy bed, and walk, that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sin. Then he turned to the sick of the palsy and said, sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, rise up, take up thy bed, and go to thine own house. And when the man made the effort, the anointing met the effort. Amen. He couldn't walk. Jesus said, rise up and walk. But I'm here because I can't walk. But you do believe you're here because you tried to get to me, don't you? You tried to get to me. So me, Jesus, is saying to you, rise up, take up that bed and walk. See, the man missed a sermon. I never said that before in my life. He missed a sermon, but he still heard the words. The word said, your sins be forgiven thee. Rise up, take up your bed and walk. Now, the point I want to make to you tonight is it's time for us to start believing in the power of words. Amen. Say that tonight, tonight I, start I start to believe, to believe afresh, and afresh and anew in the power of words. In the power of words. See, we, 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 we've cliche clickish. And we get nothing. Even the, I'm talking to the charismatic, yeah. spirit filled, supposed to know the Bible people. We, every charismatic can quote Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Yeah, it does come, but it don't work because it comes. Mm, yeah. It works because you believe it. Yeah. Faith comes, but it doesn't, the Bible doesn't say it don't work because it comes. It works because you believe and do it. And then it never said it stay it after it get it there. It said it cometh. It's in the continual, perfect, present tense. Faith cometh and cometh and cometh, meaning the word of God has to have a continual flow into your ear gate. Because faith yesterday won't heal Anthony today. 
eggs eaten last week for breakfast won't fill me up for breakfast this morning. I need eggs this morning. Same eggs, but I need to eat them implying I need to eat them all the time. My faith as a pastor, as a preacher, grows stale at times. If I don't feed my faith, if I don't nourish my faith, if I see, I can tell you all kind of faith stories that worked for me in yesteryear. And every one of them is true. I, I wouldn't be lying about one of them. At that point, my faith was active and believing God. But I need active faith today to believe for what I need today. Give us this day our daily bread. The manna fell every day. Amen. You have to, the blessings of the Lord come upon us daily. You have to, faith has to be as fresh as break, baked bread in the morning. Yeah, man. Has to be fresh from God. Yeah. You don't need to know all of the Bible all of the time, but you need to know some of the Bible all the time. And one scripture obeyed and believed can heal you, can deliver you, can prosper you. The Lord said to Norval Hayes when there was a, uh, a person, uh, he, he was in a meeting and uh, the pastor asked, I know I'm all over the place. But I, I, you know, I don't got all day, and I, and I got you here tonight, and and I might as well tell you everything while I got you. You can disciple through it and listen to it again and again and again. Somebody was in the hospital dying, unconscious, in the hospital on a ventilator. The pastor asked Norval Hayes, uh, "Would you come uh, to the hospital with me and and pray for this particular young man?" And uh, Norma Hayes said, well, I don't have much time, but I'll go down there with you. So Norma Hayes went down to the hospital. And um, when he got there, he said he went in the room, and there was a man uh, in the room uh, hooked up to all kind of devices, and he was on life support. And Norma Hayes said, I've never seen anybody breathe every once in a while. He said, this fellow breathe every once in a while. If you know Norval Hayes in his Tennessee accent, he says, well, my dear brother, sister, he said, this man breathed every once in a while. We were in the room and he'd breathe. <gasps> and then we wait, we wait, we wait, and then he exhale, go. And then he said, some time would go by. We think, well, that's his last breath, he's dead. And then a few minutes later, he go. <gasps> He said to breathe every once in a while. And so Norman Hayes knew he was in a, uh, 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 he's at deaf door. If not dead, he's at deaf door. Well, he didn't have much time. The, the man's wife was in there with him, young girl in there with him in the 20s. And uh, the man in, in unconscious can't believe for himself. So Norman Hayes grabbed the lady. See, the mom said the two shall become one. Now, a husband can believe for his wife, and a wife can believe for her husband if they're unconscious depending on what laws, what was said, or what happened prior to him getting there. See, you can set laws in motion and shut the door, nobody can help you, because the laws that were set in motion by you can only be reversed by you. So, uh, Norman Hayes prayed a little prayer for the unconscious man. That's all he could do, pray the prayer for him. He had to leave because he got to go out, got to preach another meeting that night. And uh, he said he was about to leave the hospital room feeling helpless. And the Spirit of God said to him, rose up in his belly and said, Mark eleven twenty three would heal him if it's obeyed. Mark eleven twenty three will heal him if it's obeyed. And Mark eleven twenty three says, Jesus said, Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed. Be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. And so Noah Hayes said he grabbed, the, he grabbed the young lady. He said, listen to me, darling. Listen to me, darling. Listen to me. The Lord just spoke to me. He said, Mark eleven twenty-three 23 will heal him if it's obeyed. He says, now he's unconscious. He can't believe for himself. And you're his wife, and the two shall be one flesh. You can believe for him. And he grabbed it and he says, now Mark eleven twenty three says, whosoever shall say. And I want you to say, my husband will live and not die. My husband will live and not die. Say it. Now he, he, he's running out of time. He's got to go preach a meeting and he flies out the next morning. And, and, and he says, she says something like this. He said, let me hear your sense. He said, well, uh, my, 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 
my husband will live and not die. He said, no, 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 no. He said, say it like you mean it. Say it with authority. Say it again. My, 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 my husband will live and not die. No, no, say it again. My husband will live and not die. Say it again. My husband will live and not die. My husband will live and not die. My husband will live and not die. Say it with authority. My husband will live and not die. Say it all night, all day, every time you think about it. Every time you think about it, it comes to mind. Say it hundreds of times, thousands of times. Keep saying it and don't stop. Let me hear you say it again. My husband will live and not die. My husband will live and not die. My husband will live and not die. And I think the story goes, forgive me if I don't get the date correctly, but in about three days, that man came off of that respiration, resp respiratory machine and started to breathe on his own, and he came out of that coma, totally healed. He just snapped to, came out of that coma, totally healed, could walk, no brain damage, because they said if he came to, he'd have so much brain damage, he'd get the vegetable. But he came to, could speak plain and clear, had no brain damage, and she spoke the word over him. Mark 11, 23 will heal him if it's obeyed. See, I'm talking to you about one scripture. See, that's what I'm saying. One scripture. One scripture. Mark 11, 23 will heal him if it's obeyed. There's enough healing juice. There's enough healing venom. There's enough healing virtue. And one scripture believed and obeyed to bring you off of that bed, to rise up you out of that wheelchair, to get that tumor and cancer out of your body. One scripture believed, spoken, and obeyed is enough to heal you. Amen. Mark 11, 23 will heal you if it's obeyed. Well, Mark 11, 23 brought Kennedy Hagen off of a deathbed. Five medical doctors said he had to die. You don't have one chance in a million to live. You're paralyzed. You're fading away. You're going just like medical science says you're going to have to go. He started dying at 15 before he turned 16, and the doctors gave him up to die. Incurable blood disease, deformed heart paralysis, born premature, you have to die. But one verse of scripture, believe and obey, brought him off of the deathbed. And it'll bring you off of your deathbed. It'll bring you out of whatever, whatever scripture, whatever situation you're in, if you take the word and you might have to say it till you believe it, get it out of your head and get it in your spirit. And the very moment it drops out of your head into the heart, for Romans 10, 10 says, with the heart, man, believe it. And then that's when it starts to work for you. Amen. Now, I didn't come to say none of that, but it's all good. It's all good, isn't it? Thank you for watching our show. For additional teaching by Brother Strotter or to hear this message in its entirety, go to our Anthony Strotter Ministries YouTube channel or Facebook page. If you would like to support this ministry or become a partner today, go to www.anthonystrotter.com.